Hello. I do hope that you found out about class getting canceled before you got to campus. Um, if not, I do apologize. This was kind of a, a last minute thing. Got canceled, I had to cancel it Sunday night uh, because of some sickness going through my house and I got to be a dad for a while. So we're going to go through the lessons, the lesson for chapter six, section two. It's going to be systems of inequalities. We're going to start with how to graph an inequality, how to graph multiple inequalities, and then eventually get into linear programming, which is like three or more inequalities put together and looking for maximums and minimums. We'll get to that. Um, because of the program that I'm using, I'm limited to 10 minutes videos at a time. So they're probably going to end up being two or three of these uh, for you to sit through. But uh, the idea is we get through the lesson here. And then when we get back to class Wednesday night, we can clean up whatever needs to be cleaned up. Um, and hopefully it'll all work out on the end. Um, yeah, we're a little tilted. I guess we're tilted this way. Um, and I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, we'll deal with it. All right. So first of all, to graph an inequality. It depends on how the inequality is written. So we're going to do a few different examples, but it all boils down to this. Every inequality is going to end up shading half the plane. And our job is to figure out where that boundary is and which side of the boundary to shade. Um, the boundary itself is going to be important because it also could be shaded, in which case our boundary will be solid or it will not be shaded, in which case we'll draw the boundary dashed. You'll see as we go through some examples how this is going to play out. So, first example. Hey, it works. 3x minus 2y is less than or equal to 6. In this case, we have our inequality in standard form. Been a while since we played around with standard form uh, other than in solving systems of equations earlier in this chapter uh, but the idea is when we're graphing a line and this would be a line x to the first power y to the first power and a really bad glare spot right where i'm working let me let me lower that just a bit 3x minus 2y is, what did I say, less than, less than or equal to 6. When it's in standard form, the easiest way to graph a line is to find its intercepts. For example, if we let x equal 0 in this inequality, think of it as an equation while we're trying to find our boundary line, we end up with 2y equals 6 or that y equals 3. So plot the point 0, 3. If we were to let y equal 0, then our equation would be 3x equals 6 and x would equal 2. Plot the point 2, 0. And then play connect the dots. In this case, our boundary is going to be a solid line. It's going to be a solid line because of the inequality being or equal to. The or equal to is the equal part of the equations we're playing with, and therefore it's just the line itself. Now, one side of this line is going to be our solution, and the other side is not going to be a part of our solution because all of the points on one side of the line are going to satisfy 3x minus 2y is less than 6. Again, the or equal to part is the line. The other side of the boundary is not going to satisfy 3x minus 2y is less than 6. It will all be the points greater than 6. The easiest way to do that is to pick one point as a test point. You can use any point you want as long as it's not on the boundary line itself. Easiest one to use is going to be the origin. If your boundary line goes through the origin, well, then you just choose another point, like the point 1, 0, 0, 1, something that's really easy to calculate with. If I'm going to test, if I'm going to test 0, 0, and I'm going to try to remember to talk toward my, 
my, my computer that's recording me rather than talking away from you. I'm sorry. If I test the point zero, zero, I'm going to get three times zero minus two times zero. And I want to know if that statement's true or false. Well, the left side is zero and zero is less than six. That's true. The side of the line that contains the origin then solves the inequality. The other side of the line won't. If this had come out false, it'd be the other way around. Here's my test point at the origin. It happens to lie below and to the left of the boundary line. When I tested that point, I got a true statement. If I were to test any point below and to the left of the line, it would also give us a true statement in our inequality. If I were to test any point on the other side of the boundary line, it would not give us a true inequality. It would be false. So since every point on this side of the line solves the inequality, I shade that part. It's going to be a lot easier for you to shade it using pencil, even a pen, than it is with this marker. So, you know, just kind of pretend, play along that I've shaded that whole region because that's our solution. You've finished graphing your first inequality. Congratulations. Let's try another one. Here's another line. This time we're doing it in a slope intercept format. Slope is four, the y intercept is negative one. We've graphed lines in this format before. Um, here our inequality though is strictly greater than, not greater than or equal to. It's gonna play a part in how we graph that boundary line. First of all, let's graph the line. We have a y-intercept of negative 1, plot negative 1 on the y-axis. We have a slope of positive 4. Positive slopes go up and to the right. Negative slopes go down and to the right. So in this case, it's a 4 over 1. got to have it as a fraction. So up 4, right 1. Up 4, right 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, or right 1. Do it again. One, two, three, four, right one. The boundary line is going to go through these points. But our line itself is not a part of the solution because of the fact that there is no or equal to. It's strictly greater than. When there is no or equal to in your inequality, your boundaries will be dashed like this. But as before, from this point, same idea. One side solves the inequality, the other side doesn't. Pick a test point. Our boundary gets very close to the origin, but doesn't quite go through it. We can use 0, 0. So we, we plug it in. We plug in 0 for x, 0 for y and see if our statement is true or false. Well, the left side is zero. The right side, four times zero is zero, minus one is negative one. Is zero greater than negative one? You bet it is. That was another true sentence. Always shade toward your test point if you get a true sentence. Always shade away from it if you don't. So shade to the left. And there you have your second inequality graph.